stay tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is author, actress, Elaine Kagan, and actress, J.C. Wendell. Elaine Kagan was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and raised in Kansas City. Her practical voice told her to learn some secretarial skills, which she did, and her ticket out of Missouri was a flip of the coin. How did that happen? What were the options, That's Elaine? Right. How did you know that? <laughs> oh, I know everything about I you. I still read it instantly. <laughs> I did flip a coin. I flipped a coin, New York or L.A., and a friend of mine said he wanted to use that and say it rolled behind a cigarette machine, but in all actuality, <laughs> it said L.A., and I moved to Los Angeles. Your coin said L.A.? Yeah. And you came with your secretarial skills? Of course, shorthand in typing. I know, I, I mean... Which I still use. I, I can't believe it, because as long as I've known you, everyone's always said, Elaine gets to the bottom of things. Right. She can always do things the right way. Give her a phone and a pencil. And right? she can see the world. <laughs> but so what happened when you came here? Did you come to be an actress or did you come to be a secretary? I came to be an actress, but nobody knew that because it was like a hidden agenda. But I had to eat, so I worked as a secretary. And I never did become an actress until much, much later. Well, where did you, did you get a job in show business? I worked, uh, at first I worked for IBM at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Uh, not show Very business. Very scintillating. <laughs> and then uh, my mother ran into someone on the plaza in Kansas City who said that a girl from Kansas City was leaving her job to get married, and she worked for a theatrical agent. And my mother said, go in and see if you can get her job. And I thought, oh, God, Mom, right? The woman was Barbara. She worked for Jack Gillardi, who was an agent, and she was leaving to marry Don Rickles. Oh, you're and kidding. she's still married to Don Rickles, Barbara Rickles, and I did get her job. Isn't that a great story? So, That's see? a good Hollywood story because they're still married. That's right. You did, That's right. <laughs> you did the marriage <laughs> thing. That's did you right. do it after you became a secretary, after you became an agent? Oh, yeah, Where did you do long. it? That was after I was working uh, for John Cassavetes for many years. Uh, so d were you an agent or were you an assistant agent? No, what kind I was of job? a secretary. Oh, you were the secretary of an agent. I was a secretary. There agent. were no assistants then. Did you? Then Everyone was a secretary. Oh, I see. Now there are no secretaries. Right. There's only assistants. But do these assistants still have the skills that you have? I don't think time? so. I don't think anyone can take a shorthand anymore, Joan. Not the last. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You can still fall back on it when, you know, you lose all those computer things. I don't work on a computer That's yet. what I mean. I they go out and you can still be doing what you well, were doing. Well, the other thing is, is when the book suddenly was going to be bought by Knopf, which was such a, a stunning thing, and Bob Gottlieb was calling me from New York. When Before I would call him back, I would sit with a pen and paper and take everything he said in shorthand, knowing full well that I was so excited ah. and hysterical that when I hung up, I wouldn't remember a word, you know. Ah, so. that's great. And, we, and you got us to the book. Yes, the I book did. Is, I segued you into the book. The right? book is The Girls, the and girls. it's your first novel. Yes. But this came way, yes. way uh, at the end of your life. I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> Let's start. Let's start with the book, and we'll work backwards. We'll work backwards? Well, we could do it, th we could do it the other. I'm a late bloomer in that I didn't get married until late, and I didn't have my daughter until I was 37, and I didn't go back into acting. You know, I worked as a secretary all those years you off and did? on. You did? I worked as a secretary for John, and then I wor did for production John, for Cassavetes. I did production for him and did a lot of films with him. He taught me everything. Well, were you learning to be an actress at the same time and they no, didn't know I, it? No, I really <laughs> stopped that. No, I really stopped that, except I always took improv class because oh. it was fun. You really? Know, yeah, it keeps your chops up. You weren't mm -hmm. afraid to be in front of the public then? No, or I've, in never front of an I've never been afraid to do that. <laughs> what um, got you actually your first acting job then? Well, that's a, that was a, a back thing too, backwards. I seem to do We're everything going backwards. backwards right? <laughs> um, I had done a small piece. I was married to Jeremy Kagan at the time, and I had done a small piece in a cable show he did on the conspiracies of a conspiracy of the Chicago Eight on the trial. Mm -hmm. And I played a little part. And then John Landis saw that. So as a joke, I said to him, put me in Coming to America. 
And he said, Elaine, the whole cast is black. So I said, okay, it was a joke anyway. And then one day I was in the kitchen and he called and he said, can you play a part for me tomorrow? And I said, what happened? He said, Gladys Knight was supposed to play this part and somebody's <laughs> messed up and they've sent her to Las Vegas. I said, sure I will. So I played that Western Union lady, you know, and when Eddie Murphy and Arsenio need money, Arsenio goes to send a wire to Zamunda and this broad in the, you know, in New York, she says, you know, why don't you go for a cool million? So that was me. Is that right? Yeah, and then Paramount gave me this big head, you know, this big thing with my name and everything. Suddenly, ba-boom, I was an actress, like, out of nowhere. That's how it started? After all these years That's of That's your big break? That was my Eddie big Murphy's break. Murphy's yes, it was. It well, was. good for Eddie. He's yeah, given a good lot. for John Landis. Good for, good John, for John Landis. Landis. You've played a lot of really diverse roles since then. Yeah. How long is it? 10, 12 years? How long, old no, is that? No, it's probably about eight years ago, Only about eight years. Yeah. But you've played... Tell us, you were in uh, The Trials of Rosie O'Neill. Right, I played the secretary, and everyone thought I was Hispanic. I wasn't. I was just playing it as me, but they thought How I was did you Hispanic. do that? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't know they thought I was Spanish. You did Baby Fever. Yes, Baby Fever. Baby Fever is, Henry is probably, film. yeah, that's just come out. That's probably the, the straightest role. I mean, she's like kind of a regular matron type lady, you know, which I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> but did that role have anything to do with the girls, no. the book? No. Nothing? It doesn't Nothing. Uh, Nothing. coincide mm -mm. at all? No. Because uh, you're kind of a miserable person in that. She, well, she's sad. Yeah, yeah she's sad she's because a, she finds out her life, you know, might totally be changing. No, the book, the book is totally different. The book started, Joan, five and a half years ago. And it started in what I thought was possibly a short story. Never dreaming it was a book. And... Um, it was a good friend of mine, David Freeman, who I think you know, who's a wonderful writer. And he read it, uh, that first chapter, and he said, look, kiddo, this is the beginning of a book. And he's the inspiration that got you going? It's his fault. Good for him. But it talks about, somebody says it's uh, an extension of... Um, what? <laughs> an extension of <laughs> whose book? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, somebody said it was a cross between the group, the group. and the big chill. And I said... Alavai, right? I mean, it's, it's wonderful. You Those can, are wonderful. You can you know, go for that? Absolutely. It's, it works is for it, me. Is it autobiographical? No, I don't think it is at all. I mean, I don't know anyone who's ever shot her husband. I know a lot of people who'd like to shoot their husband, but I don't know anyone who did. Well, in a I think way... the way I write, there are pieces of people in the book that are people I know. There are pieces of things that happened in the book that, of course, happened. So it, it could be like you and I sitting here and what might in my fantasy life take place after we leave the studio. You yeah. talk about in, in the, just, I've heard you give interviews and you talk about women being so loyal. I, I don't know where you get this. Is this part of your fantasy as well? No, I think the, what I'm talking about is I still have a couple high school friends from Kansas City. And although we don't, you know, we haven't lived in the same city for a hundred years. And mm -hmm. although we don't know the same people and we don't know each other's husbands, we, there seems to be an intimate bond that's still a connection from that high school thing. And when I go home, we still really love each other. I think that's the loyalty I'm talking about. You talk about the love yeah, and that. Yeah. And what do you There's also you betrayal. I think women betray each other too. You that's know, that's where I and see in the things happening. You had more betrayal in your life than I did. <laughs> and not lousy men. You talk about lousy men. I don't feel like I've had lousy men. Well, it's I don't. Th that was a quote from, from that wonderful Valentine that Ann Royfe gave me in Mirabella. Um, she said she knows about you know loyal women and lousy men. The, the man in the book, the man that the six women revolve around and the secrets that come out of who he was to each of them, um, he is a, a hero and a piece of crap. Are you allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, but he has so many personalities, he's different to each person. Yes, as I guess we all are. I, I mean, think somebody so. thinks you're terrific and somebody else says, ugh. Exactly, you know. and I know many times... Um, because, you know, I worked with Andy Warhol for years, yeah. and they'd always say, oh, he's this, he's that. He's a multifaceted personality, well, that's and I think what this we all is. are. That's what this man is. He is able to listen to women, which a lot of men have a hard time doing. He's able to fulfill some of their needs that other people can't. And he's also a cad. But some people need things. Maybe you don't need someone to listen to. Maybe right. talking to yourself is enough. Right. Maybe I need a cab. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you, <laughs> you never know. Maybe you can find one. But is there something in the book that pinpoints something that you would could read to us or 
tell us about about the friends or about whatever the good you stuff think. or yeah. the bad stuff something the, that's just like really um, um, I don't know uh, I I've been on this ten city tour and um, which is just amazing uh, it's wonderful to hear somebody read their own words why don't I read you the beginning oh that's great okay. Well, now, my accent will come back. You'll okay. see it will just automatically reappear. Kansas City, New York, Kansas City, Hispanic. Kansas City. Well, you okay. see, th that's also another funny thing. Here I am from Kansas City, wrote a book about six women in Kansas City. I have gone up for roles where I have played someone from the Midwest, and they say, she's too urban. Too much. Go on and read for us. Well, it was just a regular Tuesday morning, Francis Ordinary, just the same old, same old. Tom left at the crack to open the store. He and his partners take turns opening, and I got up before he did. I wanted to get an early start with the shopping before it got too hot. But then Stevie was late for school, and his car wouldn't turn over, so first I had to drop him off. He's driving that old clunker of Mama's, and it's always acting up. Tom wanted to replace it, but I said, no, he's going away to college in September. He can just make do till then. Oh, aren't you funny, Francis? Of course, it's a Buick. <laughs> Mama always drove Buicks. Of course, you can't tell to look at it. I mean, you can't tell now what any car is. Do you remember her Buick I drove in high school, how beautiful it was, like a big, long, two-tone green boat with Veniports and all that leather inside? And you had your daddy's two-door blue Pontiac Chieftain Veniports, Francis. Don't you remember those chrome holes on the side of the doors that looked like portholes on a ship? They were Buick trademark. Well, of course, that was then when each car looked different and a Ford looked like two boxes and you knew it was a Ford and the Chevy was more rounded and now they don't care. You just stand there in the parking lot. You don't have the slightest idea which one is yours. They all look alike and you feel like a moron because you don't know where your car is. Of course, you don't have to worry about that now, do you, Francis, living in New York and all. You just say, taxi. Isn't that great? Because it is, it's like a conversation, to, talking about a car, right. or talking <laughs> about a window, or talking, but women can find so many ways to talk about one thing. Well, that's the way she, she particularly talks. This is Ellen. Um, there are five monologues, and then it changes form, and it's the, it's the funeral in the wake, and then Good. two more. Do we so. have another book coming? Well, yes, I'm supposed to write one for Knopf, so hopefully I'll come up with an idea, Joan. If you think of anything, you'll call me. <laughs> okay, we'll talk. <laughs> also, before we leave, would you um, rather be remembered as an author or an actress? God, I'd rather be remembered as a funny woman. Oh, really? Are we going to do stand-up? Oh, God, I never thought of that. No, I'd, I'd rather be remembered as a good friend or a wonderful mother or a terrific daughter. I love both things, so I'm, I'm not being cute. I really love both things. They're both very different. Are you going to be um, making this into a movie so that we can see a role for I you? I certainly hope so. <laughs> I said that I probably wouldn't get an opportunity to audition because I'm not a big enough actress, right? But I hope it's made into a film. I think it'd be an extraordinary film with six great female parts. They're always complaining about no parts for women. Here they are. They are. Yeah. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for making these roles for women. Okay. And thank you for really being honest about them. I think you, you just can paint a clear picture. You paint a picture of yourself and of me right. and of all the women of out us. there. <laughs> Don't go away, we'll be right back with J.C. Wendell. I'm Joan Quinn and we're back with actress J.C. Wendell who is a series regular on CBS TV's Dave's World and co-star in Universal's Quantum Leap. She's been in Fox's Hollywood uh, stunt maker. She's done a lot of theater, including a national tour of The Odd Couple with Tom Poston and Tim Conway. That must have been some learning experience, JC. Oh, the, the tour with Tim and Tom? <laughs> oh, yes. Tim yes. and Tom, it sounds already. Tim and Tom, <laughs> yes, it was quite, it was a learning experience. Were you always laughing? Yes, <laughs> constantly, on the plane, getting off the plane, <laughs> booking into the hotels, we were always, no. Um, it wasn't really so much a learning experience as it was just a lot of fun and, um, both Tom Poston and Tim Conway, of course, are, are very, very funny men. They're very sort of dryly funny. Do they know. play jokes on you? Do they play jokes on you? They, um, actually, Tim Conway liked to, uh, on stage, when uh, 
first of all, in the whole play, the original play, The Odd Couple, there's only two female roles. And myself and another uh, woman played these, these two, the, the Pigeon Sisters, who are right. very British and sort of, you know, <laughs> kind of skittish and, you know, kind of silly. And so we'd come in and laugh. We were their dates. <laughs> so we come in near the end of the play, and they're all warmed up by this time. And both Tim and Tom, as the run of the play went on, would discover all of this material that they had between one another that was all, you know, improvised. That and they'd been improvising yes, the whole night. the whole night, the whole time. And the audiences just ate up with a spoon. <laughs> and so we would come out, and they would always usually pull something on us because we were the girls, you know. And how would you react? What was happening? Well, it was it was great. I mean, uh, Tim had this bit with a soup ladle that he would stick out of his jacket, and he would turn to shake our hands right after we'd entered and gone, how, how are you? And he, there'd be this huge ladle, st first sticking out of his pants, then sticking out of his sleeve. And so he would do different things with the ladle. So you would time. never know where to expect to see no. the ladle. The ladle would, would change, and then he would, uh, he would just come up with different things in, in the course of our long scene with the two of them. And God, Tom used to paint on these huge eyebrows. I don't know what to this day. I don't know why he did it, but he just had these gigantic caterpillars riding up above his eyes of just the big black crayon. God. So that made you laugh just looking at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then he would whisper things to us. Did know. he ever make fun of your name, JC? I mean, what is JC? What is JC? It means just cash, actually. I can and imagine he yeah. probably said that. <laughs> yeah. I stole it from that. <laughs> no, people constantly make fun of my name. They call me Miss Penny, Miss Pennies, and but that's all right. It is just cash? No, it's no, not. No, it's what is it? Jennifer Christina. Oh, that's better. But it was a nickname that I got years and years and years ago. Because um, people must get confused. T today, even when you came into the studio, they said, where's Mr. Wendell? Oh, yeah. Where's Mr. Yeah. Wendell? That does happen a lot with <laughs> mail order things. Just Mr. Wendell at home. <laughs> how did you get your start in Hollywood? Oh, how did I get my start? Well, I grew up in a show business family. My mother is an actress, and she still works and, a lot. And what's her name? Elmarie. Elmarie Wendell. Oh, she, uh, EM. Yeah, yeah, EMJC. Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon, EMJC. <laughs> Elmarie, she, uh, she was the original Mary Twinkle. Uh, Mary Twinkle. Yeah, little, no, Nancy Twinkle in Little Mary Sunshine on Broadway. Say, Mary Sunshine, yeah, that was great. And she, uh, she was a big... Uh, Broadway actress for years in New York and still works a lot out here. So I and then my father is still in New York and he's an artist and a composer. Really? So I kind of grew up around the whole painter element. Yeah, he still paints. <clears throat> Mostly he's been writing plays and what these kind days. Oh, writing musicals or just uh, yeah, really? Yeah. Has he had anything uh, published that we know of? Um, not yet. There's one that they're working on there that's sort of a political farce. That oh, that's great. Should be. Um, so you grew up in a showbiz family. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? New York, Manhattan. See, I don't know anything about you, so we have to find out everything <laughs> yeah. for our audience. We should today. talk. Where'd you go to school? I'm from the city. <laughs> um, well, we traveled a lot, <laughs> so I went to school all over the place. I I went to. There was one year I think I was I was in ten schools. Really? Well, because my mom because she was moving. would go on the road, and you know she'd take me with her because they were split up by then and. So we had, a, we had a home base in Manhattan, then we had a home base at, for a while in Florida. I went to high school in junior high in Florida. That was the longest period of time. Would she uh, bring her little daughter onto stage with her? Yes. Yeah, uh, she did. She did when I was eight. That's when I made my debut. And she had a number called The Oldest Living Showgirl in Las Vegas. It was very funny. She's a comedian, singer. She was doing some, some review, and she, it was New Year's Eve, and... She'd brought me on stage to do the number because I knew all the numbers, you know, in the entire show and always did and would do them backstage. And so she brought me on and I did this number and, and then uh, they kept it in for a while. <laughs> did they? So, yeah. So that, that was really your big break in, on yeah. stage. Yeah. And it seems like you've done a lot of stage work. And a lot of TV work. Is there mm -hmm. a reason for that? Well, the, the stage work, of, uh, you know, the theater is, is, when you're a young actor, you think that that's all there is. You know, well, I'm just going to stay in the theater. And I'll be doing, you know, the classics forever. <laughs> but um, 
of course, there's a lot more than theater, but that's, you know, that's where you get your training, or you should, anyway. I guess a little bit of a snob about that, but you should, you know, have your, your background, your training in the theater. What about feature films? I haven't really done too many of those. And Is there a I'd reason? Like to. Is there a reason for this? Not really. It's just where so far the, the cards have landed. I mean, I've done, you know, everyone's done low budget thrillers. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Mm -hmm. so including JC. <laughs> yes, including me. So I've done my, my share of those. But I think it's, uh, that, that'll come. And the roles that I want to do anyway, I've, I'm just beginning to mature into. How did the Dave's World thing come about? And, um, are you having fun on the set? Oh, yeah. It's, I'm spoiled because I haven't been a series regular before, and everyone on the show has. I mean, I've done television, but not half hour. Mm -hmm. And half hour is the closest you can get to theater. It's, really? Yeah. But, I mean, you've got your audience. You go through the show, y you know, in sequence, and uh. Uh, you don't shoot out of sequence. And, and mostly because of the audience. So it, it made it easy for you, doing yeah. so much stage work, then just oh, stepping yeah. into this. Absolutely. It made it very easy. Do we have a clip yes. from this? Yes. Oh, we do? Yes, clip from the show. Okay, let's see that. Tell okay. us what it's about. Uh, this, I think, is from the pilot, the pilot of the show, which aired, was the first one that aired. And um, this was where my character, Mia, sort of gets introduced in, in the show. Okay, good. Let's see it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Cobb called you back during lunch. The art department is waiting for you. Oh, and Dave, your friend Dr. Baylor is here. He wants to know if you're busy. So I said, oh. Dave! <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> okay, oh God. You know, speaking of funny. <laughs> I have a wonderful idea for your column. Oh, gee, Mia. No, 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 no. Okay. Something that really peeves me off. That's the way we humorists start. <laughs> Something that really peeves me off are all these dumb blonde jokes. Like the one I heard this morning no, no, about Mia, what... See, no, no, see, that's a joke. I don't do jokes. I do observational humor. It's humor from stuff I observe in everyday life. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Are all these dumb blonde jokes like the one I observed somewhere? <laughs> Mia, we are in conference about something urgent. Oh, uh-huh. Get shot down again, sir. <laughs> Why did the dumb blonde stare at the orange juice carton? Because it said, concentrate. <laughs> Andy Rooney would pay big for that. <laughs> so do you Actually, still think like that, that you <laughs> dumb blonde jokes and get away with them? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny because when I read the, the pilot, that joke is Dave. actually a joke I told before. Oh, you have as your, <laughs> as, your, as your own dumb blonde. As my own, my own self. My own just self. Well, in your body listed all these athletic things that you did. Mm -hmm. Do you still do them? I do. I do. As a matter of fact, last summer I did Circus of the Stars on the trapeze. You do? You can do that? I do. You run, you yeah. do aerobics, you dance? Yep. Yep, I do it all. Do you go to classes? I stopped taking classes a couple of years ago, but uh, I'm still, I can still do the stretches. Oh, good. <laughs> the other thing that I think was, was funny is that you uh, listed blackjack. Were you a dealer? Oh, yes, it's one of my special skills. Yeah, special um, skill. <laughs> well, you know, at those times when you have to sort of make the rent, yes. uh, when you're not working and doing um, half-hour television, way back when, after college, um, I would work for this company that put cute girls behind blackjack tables in nightclubs. And Where? In, All over the country? No, in L.A. Oh, in L.A.? Yeah. It was right after I'd gotten here. I was very young. I didn't have any money and sort of supplemented my income by m making tips by dealing this card game, Did which is real blackjack, just that they couldn't keep any of their winnings because that would be illegal gambling. Did you know how to add and subtract? Yes, very quickly, I might add, too. So you were a good dealer. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I thought, and you've already showed us a little bit uh, about a little bit about it. The, the other thing that I read was your dialects. 
Give oh. this long list of dialects. Yeah. Was this all picked up on the road when you were traveling with yeah, your mom? I think so, yeah. And plus, she says I just have an ear, a parrot's ear, that if I hear something once, I can do it. Do you take classes for that? Some people do, but I don't. You don't? Yeah. Tell us what dialect. Irish, I think you said. Oh, gosh. Irish, uh, English, um, Scottish, Southern, New York. You know, New York? Midtown. You don't, you don't sound like you could talk New York. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so I said to him, what morning, are you crazy? Just take the A train. Why you take a cab all the way out there? So you know how to speak New Yorkese. Yeah. <laughs> you did a soap opera, too. Yeah, I did uh, General, no, was it? nothing major, but it was, you know. Does that help you in kind of establishing yourself? Uh, any kind of With credits TV? help Does it? a little. Even if you're just going, Dr. Quarterman, the hyperbolic chamber's ready, stat. <laughs> Which is what? Which is what? An audition? <laughs> that was, I think, basically what I did. I That's what you did. Where, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, oh, I don't know. Ruling a small country, possibly. I, I <laughs> on your own? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, never on my own. <laughs> Do you do you think you'll still be in in show business? Do you want to direct? Oh, yeah. Do you want to? No, do I don't want. To, I have no interest in directing or producing. None. I want everyone else to take the responsibility. I just want to keep working. Why do you think people get into that? People who are um, actors always want to direct. I mean, you're one of the first people that doesn't know. No, yeah, who says I don't want to do I that? I don't. I'd rather turn the reins over to someone else. I think it's all about creative control, and having more creative control to get a finished product. Because with films and television, you have to remember, it's such a collaborative effort. There's so many different people working on. So if you're directing, you get more control, or you're yeah, producing. So. But as acting, you'll, you'll just sit back and let them tell you what to do. You are a tool. As an actor, you are a vehicle for everybody else's neuroses and trauma. Well, you've been a great vehicle for us today. <gasps> Thank you. Yeah, you've been terrific. And I'm really happy that you were with us. And Me lots too. of good luck. Thanks. And thanks, and thanks to all of our uh, viewers for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles, and keep writing. If you want to know anything about J.C. Wendell, write to us at 520 South Grand, 8th floor, and we'll send the letters on to her. <laughs> keep them coming. <laughs> Next time. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. So.